Hey ladies, this is Mini Apple Mom to be here. I know it has been months since I have uh, recorded a video. Um, a quick recap I uh, had my frozen embryo transfer on June 3rd. Uh, I got a big fat positive. Um, on Friday, September 25th, I was 19 weeks pregnant. Um, this is kind of hard. I'm, hopefully I can get through this without getting too emotional. Um, Friday, September 25th, um, like I said, I was 19 weeks pregnant. And around my lunch break, around 1 o'clock or so, I was not feeling well. Uh, so I went to the ladies' room and, um, you know, I was trying to have a, sorry for the TMI, but a bowel movement. Um, I had the bowel movement and then I um, noticed that I had some bleeding. So I uh, went back to my office, um, went and got a pad and then called my doctor's office um, to say that I needed to come in right away to see somebody. Uh, this was about 3 o'clock or so um, when I went to the bathroom and all of this transpired. So then I went to the clinic. Uh, they got me in right away. And um, the doctor came in and listened to um, the baby's heartbeat. Uh, and we named our baby Tristan. So Tristan's heartbeat was 166. So I was really optimistic, um, you know, that the bleeding was hopefully just temporary and was going to resolve itself and I was going to be sent on my way. Um, next, the doctor did a pelvic exam and she, before she could even really even get the spacula in um, good, she had already hit me with devastating news. Um, she said, oh, sweetie, I am so sorry. Um, this is not a viable, um, pregnancy. Uh, you have to hurry up and get to the hospital because, um, your vaginal canal is full of part of the, the sac. Um, so I had already called my husband to let him know that I was going to the clinic. So he was on his way already to meet me there. When he got there, I broke the news to him. And I mean, it just, it shattered us both. So, um, he drove me to the mother baby center. Um, and, uh, you know, they triaged me right away. Um, they, um, got me in. I was having such bad contractions. Um, they did give me an epidural and they just basically, you know, did an ultrasound, confirmed that, you know, the sac was in my vaginal canal. Um, oh gosh. And, um, so... They just, they didn't, you know, check me to, for dilation or anything like that after that initial exam. I think they said I was like two centimeters dilated or so. And um, they just said they were just going to let my body naturally deliver Tristan. And so, um, you know, they had, you know, once I got the epidural, they were flipping me from side to side every two hours. So then Saturday morning, September 26th at 6.06 .06 a.m., uh, we gave birth to our baby boy, Tristan. Uh, he was still born, but um, he was still perfect. He was handsome, a little guy. Um, I did the skin to skin, so I was able to hold him and spend time with him and he still you know was moving some but they said there was nothing that they could do <laughs> sorry to um to because he they say he was four weeks too early if he was four weeks older they would have been able to put him in an incubator and try to you know 
for him to be viable. Um, so, um, uh, so since then, today is, I didn't even tell y'all what day today is. Today is October 18th, Sunday. Um, my daughter put me on six weeks of disability. Um, so I'll go back to work November 9th or so. Um, I've been diagnosed with postpartum depression and they have me on Zoloft and, um, I'm not sleeping good at all. Uh, I just miss my baby. I just, I was, we both were so hopeful this time because with our previous miscarriages, I mean, we were like six, eight weeks along and this time we were 19 weeks along. So we thought everything was going to be great. We had gone to Connecticut to have our baby shower and gender reveal with our family and just everything and it just came crashing down so quickly. Um, oh gosh. So I've been going to, I've gone to a support group by um, talking to different nurses and therapists. They call me and, you know, set goals with me because you know I don't even want to get out of the bed or get dressed or eat or do anything and so my husband has been an awesome support if he's been you know, making sure that I eat and uh you know he was only able to get a week off from work um and but my family my dad, my mom, my aunt, they flew in from Connecticut to spend time with me. And, um, so I'm just taking it one day at a time right now. Um, we do have one more embryo in the freezer. Um, so I'm at a place now where I can think about the future and I'm hopeful, um, so we're going to try again. We are. We found out that, well, see, this is the thing. All right. So I already knew that I had a uh, incompetent cervix or a compromised cervix. I don't even know what it's called. But when I was um, in college in 96, uh, they found some cancerous cells. So I had to have a laser cone. So I had part of my cervix removed. The doctor and surgeon who did my surgery told me, he said, when you get pregnant, <clears throat> down the road, you are going to need a cervical cerclage. You're going to need to get stitched up when you're pregnant. So I had told the doctor that on my first visit, my first prenatal visit, I said, you know, I shared that information about what the surgeon and doctor had said. And so then he referred us to a perinatologist. So the perinatologist did the check and said, oh, well, no, your cervix looks good. You know, if it was less than 2.5 centimeters, then we would put the cerclage in, but you're at 3.1 centimeters, so we'll just keep an eye on it and monitor you like every two weeks. So then uh, the second appointment, it actually had gotten longer. I didn't know my service could get longer. It was like 3.5 or 3.6 centimeters. And so that Friday... Um, when I went into preterm labor, my actual next pre, um, perinatal uh, appointment was supposed to be that upcoming Monday, but I didn't make it to that. So I don't know, just a lot of anger, uh, blaming myself that I didn't push for the cerclage. Um, at least now I'm at a place where I, I'm not beating myself up so much. But I still f feel horrible that we didn't do the cerclage. Um, so now um, I'm going for my follow-up four-week appointment next Thursday. Um, I'm going to go see the doctor who actually delivered Tristan and, and um, was at the hospital when we delivered because he's the one in, in my practice that um, does the cerclages. Probably going to also get a second opinion from another doctor that um, did three cerclages for a woman that works with my husband. And all three of her pregnancies were successful. So, you know, I'm 
I, I apologize it's taking me so long to record. I just haven't been in the right frame of mind to do anything. I just, I'm, I'm sure you all can understand. So I just wish I had a um, better update for you ladies. Um, but uh, I wanted to at least come on and let you know where I am. I'm still here. I'm just literally, like I said, taking it day by day. Like I said, it's a chore just to get up and function every day. And um, if it wasn't for my husband, I probably would just be in the bed all the time. And then also my dogs um, and and my cats have been keeping me busy. So um, thank you all for your support. And uh, I've gotten the messages you all have been asking for updates. I just wish this was a better update that I... Um, was coming to you all with so I'll keep you all posted we're not going to do our um, next frozen embryo transfer until around like December uh, or January of 2016 so December 2015 2016 but for now I'm gonna take a break and then I'll come back and update you all around that time love you all peace